Hello my gravy babies! On the previous video we introduced ourselves to the very high level concept of the new React Native architecture. So now it's time to get our hands dirty. In order to do this, what I'm going to show you is the step by step of reproducing the library I created, React Native Quick SQL Lite. It is the typical SQL library, but this time it uses JSI bindings, which makes it faster than all the other implementations out there. We will go over every single step of the way, creating an old school C++ library, migrating it to the JSI, registering our functions, and finally, implementing all the internal details of in C++ using the JSI classes and functions. I'm excited, let's get started. So, the first step is creating a library, and of course, in order to set up a library, we need to set up a lot of scaffolding. However, this is just boring tasks. I don't want to waste time. Therefore, I'm just going to use an existing package. It's called React Native Builder Bob, which is going to scaffold all the code that we need to create a library. It doesn't scaffold JSI libraries for now, but it does scaffold C++ libraries. And from there, we can take over and just migrate. So I'm just going to go to the repository of React Native Builder Bob and I'm just gonna copy the command that I need in order to initialize a new library. Then I'm just gonna go to my terminal and I can just create one example. So I'm just gonna call this super SQL byte. So this is going to take a little bit to install because it needs to install a lot of dependencies. But in the meantime, there are a couple of things I want to remark to you. Um, first is that we will start coding on iOS just because iOS is a lot um, easier to get started when coding on C++ um, because Android needs us to set up the JNI and we need to set up we need to change some other native code in order to achieve it which is not important it's not what I want to cover so we'll just start on uh, iOS and then later down the road, we will take a look into Android. Now you can see that uh, React Native Builder Bob already prompted me for some information. I just fill most of them, but the most important part comes when it prompts you on this question, which languages do you want to use? And here I'm just going to go for C++ because that's gonna set up everything for us. And from there we can take over and implement the JSI. So in my machine, I already run this um, dependency. If you run it for the first time, like I said, it's gonna take a little bit to install all the dependencies. So have a little bit of patience. And once we are done, we can finally go into the directory. And I'm just gonna open it on VS Code. And let's just explore a little bit what React Native Builder Bob has created for us. So, it has created a lot of the scaffolding, as you can see. Here, for example, it has already created a pod spec for us, which is necessary when React Native is gonna auto-link our library. One of the most important properties you can see here is the source files property. Uh, and for iOS, it's going to explore all the folders under the iOS directory, and it's gonna consider, or it's gonna copy all the HMMM H C++ files, right? So this is what tells um, which files need to be imported into the final project where the library is going to be imported in order to compile all the dependencies. So basically on iOS, that's all the compilation chain. I'm not going to go into too much detail. All you need to know that um, Objective-C being a subset of the C language you can compile also C++ and you can actually write this very weird dialect of C++ code plus Objective-C code. It's kind of weird, don't worry about it, we will explore it in a little bit. Now, the other thing I would like to show you is the existing C++ code that the library has created for us. So here you can see we have an example.cpp and internally, it's just a multiply function. We have the corresponding header, 
if you uh, are starting with this video and you haven't seen the previous videos, I also created a C++ guide for JavaScript developers, so you should check that out. Um, but it's basically a very simple C++ module. And it has also created uh, an example React Native application that already, if we go into the app.tsx, you can already see that is calling the C++ code, which is very, very nice. But it's not useful because we need to use the JSI and the JSI doesn't use any of the um, usual way of importing the libraries. Great, so we need to start migrating this into the JSI. So basically on this video, and this is going to be the last thing that we cover, uh, we're gonna start with the very, very basic code to get access to the JS runtime. And from there we can um, extract, or we're gonna use the JS runtime to inject all the JSI properties. Um, don't get too confused. As we go forward, you will start to understand why this is important. So, so the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to close all these files, all the folders, and I'm going to go into the iOS folder. And I'm going to take a look into this uh, super sqlite.mm file. So here you can see you can see that uh, the termination there's another file which is .m and .mm and that is because the m termination is for objective c files and the mm termination is for c++ files. Right, so this is what I meant. If you change the termination or the extension of your Objective C code, you can actually start writing C code inside of Objective C. So, the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this file. This is not necessary. I don't know why React Native Builder Bob created it for us. And here, is where I'm gonna start modifying the code a little bit. So the header file, the header file, the first import is fine. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And I'm gonna add some other imports. I'm gonna import React RCT bridge private. Then I'm going to import JSI JSI H. Then I'm going to import RCT utils. Sorry, React RCT utils dot H. Then I'm going to import the React common call invoker. And finally, I'm going to import memory. Now, um, we need to do a little bit of Objective-C code. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about Objective-C. We're not going to use it really. It's just kind of the glue that React Native needs in order to set up our functions. And we basically have two functions and that's it. So. You can just pretty much copy what I'm writing. First, I'm going to create a new function requires main queue setup. And here I'm just going to return yes. Then I'm going to create a more interesting function, which is going to be called the set bridge function. It's going to take an RCT bridge pointer And inside of this function, I am just going to save the instance of the bridge. I am going to set another variable, is main queue. 
then I'm going to cast the pointer into an RCT C++ bridge instance. RCT CXX bridge. So this is my pointer and I'm just casting my existing bridge from so from the RCT bridge which is this is misspelled into an RCT C++ bridge. Now I guess it's important to clarify that C++ is the same as or CXX is the same as C++ you cannot use plus plus as a name of a variable so in a lot of places whenever you read CXX then that means C++. So here's an important check on my C++ bridge I'm going to check for the runtime property if the runtime property is not there then that means I cannot instantiate my JSI functions and this will happen for example if you connect your react native into the Chrome debugger into your web browser debugger then the runtime will not be there because the runtime is only implemented on certain engines and with certain configuration therefore if you didn't know it you can no longer run JSI code attached to the Chrome debugger you need to keep it running on device and in order to debug it you need to use flipper so now that we have now that we're sure that we have the runtime I'm going to install SQL or yeah this, this is just going to be the function that um, we are going to call later and here I'm going to cast the runtime property of the C++ bridge into the actual implementation of the JSI runtime so C++ bridge runtime and I'm going to finally well that's all I need I mean I could actually implement one more function the inva the invalidate function which is going to be called whenever my application or my module uh, finishes, finishes the job but since we're creating a SQL library this is pretty much never going to be called so this is going to be on our implementation to get the runtime instance the runtime instance of the JSI is probably the most important object this is the object that's going to allow us to inject properties into the JavaScript context to create certain objects that are going to be able to be read both by by JavaScript and by C++ so this is pretty much the key that we need to write our JSI modules now before continuing I also have to modify my header file maybe I should have started it there but well I forgot about it <laughs> so I'm going to do that now and it's going to be quite simple so here I already have the RCT bridge module that's fine and here I'm also going to import a new library which is going to be the same as the name of my project because this is actually going to be the code that or custom code for our library and here I'm just going to create a property non-atomic and assignable which is pool set bridge on main queue that's it so if I try to compile this now it's not going to work anyways but I just wanted to show you the very very basic block of creating a JSI library right now as times goes on and turbo modules get more stable this will probably disappear right you will no longer need to manually extract the JSI runtime from the bridge instance for the from the internals of react native 
this will probably all be already be taken care for you and you should be able to just um, use a different generator that will generate a JSI module, right? This is also where code gen comes in. We might be able to instantiate the modules based on a interface that we declare the types on um, TypeScript or on Flow. But for now, this is what we need to do. On the next video, we're gonna move on forward and we're gonna start setting up our own library and especially this function, the install SQL function, which is where we will register our um, JSI functions or global functions that will in turn um, communicate or implement all the functionality that we need to communicate with the SQL side of things. Thanks a lot and see you next time.